Hello there, green has really grown on me this year, particularly in the nail polish department. I've got a note in my phone with great green polishes you've suggested, and you'll often see me leaving comments politely needing to know which green someone is wearing. As we head into the holidays, I thought I'd share a roundup of one of the nail shades of the moment. Happens to feel cozy and festive if you want to find a match for a holiday party outfit, but I love it all year round and match my homewares or house plants instead. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, part of my work with the website builder I used to make MatildaOnVideo.com a couple of years ago. You can refer back to this list of gorgeous greens in a blog post there. Now green is a broad colour group. Don't get me started on mint and sage polishes, love those too, but we'll save them for another time. Sticking to deeper, classic, rich greens here. Starting with olive and hunter greens and gradually getting deeper with emerald and forest tones. Plus some nail painting tips along the way. You can find my original nail tutorial linked below for a complete at-home mani routine due to share an updated version in the new year. I've heard OPI Infinite Shine in Olive for Green is consistently in the brand's top three bestsellers in Australia, and that's saying something because OPI have a million colours. Love that Aussies are loving green as much as I am. Described as an army green, evergreen, it feels like a sophisticated, elegant olive to me. Infinite Shine is OPI's gel-like formula. I don't use any actual gel polishes, never have, but I love the longer wear time of gel-like formulas. Like like Infinite Shine and Essie Gel Couture. This has a three-step system with primer, colour and top coat. Skipped filming the steps for the sake of time today, but base and top coat are always very helpful to give your mani a longer life. A primed base for polish to sit on and a top coat to lock it all in. The Olive and June shade Geometry was probably what kicked off my green era when it launched in the brand's fall collection last year. It was a back-to-school theme with cozy collegiate colours and a gossip girl plaid coat sort of colour story, described as hunter green, but I saw someone call it Slytherin green and that's more like it. Olive and June polishes have a thicker consistency than other brands, that's due to their high resin content, which is what makes them so long lasting. Just make sure you stick to thin coats, don't try to rush and get more coverage in one, it's never worth it with any polish. Thicker coats are less likely to set completely, more likely to dent, smudge, peel, chip. I'm usually a two to three thin coats person for strong, even colour. A fresh and springy sprout green now, OPI Infinite Shine in Rated PG. Honestly, person who names OPI polishes has been one of my dream jobs since I was about seven years old. I mentioned before that Infinite Shine is gel-like, not a real gel polish, so you don't need a special light to cure or set these. The formula has a mix of regular polish and gel technologies, so it sets in ambient light instead, just adequate normal light at home. Having said that, I heard an interesting tip from the OPI team recently. Because the polish is still responding to natural light, the brighter the better. Painting in a nice bright space rather than a dark room or by the light of your bedside lamp like I used to paint years ago. Good to know. Time for a winter green if you're watching from the Northern Hemisphere now. Olive and June Besties from their Winter 2020 collection, still available, is described as deep emerald, a pretty pine green even. We talked about thin coats last time, but enough drying time in between those coats is just as important to extend wear time. As tempting as it is to power through and keep painting more coats straight away, give yourself at least a five minute gap between each coat to make sure each layer completely hardens. It makes the process take a little longer, hop on a podcast or a YouTube video, but I promise it helps make your polish last longer and reduces the likelihood of bumping, smudging or denting it immediately post mani. That drying time tip has helped me get to at least four, five, sometimes even seven to ten days chip free. Before we move on to the darker shades, if you're enjoying this green theme so far but want to refer back to these polish names quickly in future, you can find them in a blog post. MatildaOnVideo.com is a Squarespace site. They're a very popular website building platform for creators and quite a few of my friends who run small businesses use Squarespace too because their tools are easy to operate and you never have to start from scratch. There are stylish templates to get you up and running or you can customize your site to suit your passion project, blogging habits or online store. 
If you're interested, Squarespace offer a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, you can visit squarespace.com Matilda to save 10% on your first website or domain name purchase. Time to talk deep greens, taking you to Australia to meet Miss Frankie from Melbourne. Launched about five years ago, the founder is a professional manicurist and salon owner, and her moody dark green No Envy feels very festive. Love seeing a nice wide brush. Most of the brands I use have a wider brush like this, which means fewer strokes, which means more even coats. I try to avoid flooding my cuticles, which is polish crashing into the skin at the base of your nail. Start further away from the base than you need, then slowly push up towards your skin nearly touching it then glide back down the nail I do a stroke down the middle then either side but this might vary depending on the size of your nails particularly your thumb or your pinky might even be covered in one swipe Olive and June into the trees, also known as into the woods or out of the woods in my mind, whatever musical reference you prefer. This sprucey shade was from winter last year, another great wintry evergreen. You'll notice I've been tidying up along the way to make my mani look as neat as possible with Olive and June's cleanup brush. Very helpful to tidy up any mistakes and perfect the shape of your polish. I'll leave my ONJ code below. I use a lot of their tools in my routine, but this is my favorite. I dip the little brush into nail polish remover repeatedly and gently buff away stray polish. If you do this when your polish is still wet, you do risk bumping or smudging it, so give it five minutes before you go in. Nice way to tidy up that cuticle gap, and I like to leave a tiny gap down either side of my nails to elongate them slightly too. Last but not least, I have you to thank for introducing me to Essie Off Tropic. This was the most popular polish suggestion when I'd picked your brains a while ago, searching for good greens. Thank you. I'm obsessed with this one. A deliciously dark green, so satisfying to glide on. Just holding the brush horizontally, parallel to the nail, rather than coming from above and bending the brush back, if that makes sense. Like the brush is floating across the surface, not pressing down, which might leave stroke marks. I also pretend my nails are longer than they are and let the brush fall off so there's no polish buildup, letting the brush cascade over the edge like a water to fall in a forest on theme with the greens here there you go hopefully these greens didn't give you too much envy if they did let me know which shades you love the look of please dm me a photo on instagram at matilda on video if you try any of them there's still room for more polish in that note on my phone though so if i've missed a delightful dark green nail color please share it in the comments thanks for watching see you next time